Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhassa So some of you have missed the Wednesday. Wonderful big thing. We're a transformation of Linda to become Don. So I want to show some of the pictures because some of you missed Donnie. At least Donnie missed it. Uh, well, Jody, you missed it. And two of you missed it. Who else? Oh, Sydney missed it. Oh, yeah, you do too, right? I think we should show these pictures, right? <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, I don't know how to figure out to put on a full screen from Facebook. So I, you just have to bear with this. Can you see? You want the lights off? Yeah, lights out, please. There's quite a bit of glaring, right? That's Linda, right? So this is her. <laughs> Darren, huh? You recognize her? You do? Oh, Samuel, you know Sam's son yesterday? She walked by and, and she said, hi, Samuel. And Samuel said, hi. And I said, Samuel, did you see Linda? No. <laughs> I said, you didn't recognize her. I said, she becomes a nun. Really? <laughs> she, he was like this. Really? And those, so you came out and he just looked at you like. <laughs> so, yeah. So, because he wasn't here, right? So, it's just some of the pictures from. Uh, so, there's a uh, requesting to be teachers, right? This, this you, you guys, you, you folks did not see either. It happens inside, remember? So, um, it's requesting us to be her teachers. Okay. You like those five buns? Those five really <laughs> buns? This is actually, this is what my teacher did to us when I when we ordained. Um, actually, because there was a picture of Mansuri Bodhisattva, the uh, Bodhisattva of great wisdom. Um, he was in the sky, in the, in the clouds. Somebody took a picture from the plane when they traveled to the five mountains, the five peaks mountains in China. And somebody took a, the, the pictures of the cloud. The clouds looks very beautiful. And then there was this little little guy, like a babe, like a child, like really a child, very innocent face and with five buns. So um, so that we uh, uh, that he has a name. It's called the Five Buns uh, Bodhisattva of Wisdom. So, Mansuri, um, Mansuri uh, Bodhisattva. So that's why uh, our our Sifu wanted us to be as wise as Mansuri Bodhisattva. So when we when we renounce, so we are all like, of course, only women can have men. I, I never had a Dhamma brother who has long hair. <laughs> so it's only women who got the, the hair tied up into five buns. <laughs> so cute, eh? <laughs> I think it was so cute. Huh? Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. So so that was the uh, ceremony and then giving her teaching. And then this is the last, paying last respect to the parents. Because uh, after we take ordination, after we take the precepts, especially the Bhikkhuni precepts, the 348 precepts, we don't bow to our parents anymore. You see, because parents are householder then we are monastics, so, you know, we don't bow. So that would be the last respect. We we, we, we could still see them or whatever, but bowing, because bowing is such a common thing in Chinese, in the old tradition of Chinese. Uh, so we always bow to our parents and bow to our elders. Right? <coughs> so that's the last time that, um, even though uh, 
uh, Darren says uh, parents are not here anymore, but still we need to actually have that respect in us. Cutting, <laughs> very tough to, to shave her hair, Dan Sifu said. <laughs> it was because the hair was long and a little bit stiff <laughs> and the blaze wasn't very sharp. <laughs> it is very sharp, but it's, you know, it's just, it's very difficult. So um, <laughs> they try very hard, very serious. So my brother said, wow, you know, you took 20 minutes to shave one head. If you have 10 students who want to shave, then you take hours. I said, then we'll find, we'll find other ways if we have to shave 10 in a row, right? Yeah, so. And nice pictures, eh? Yeah, yeah, nice picture. It's good memory. So showing her face. Yeah. So when I when I shaved her, I uh, remember uh, I said the first shave, we wish all the um, beings to be free of all afflictions. The second shave is we wish all beings to actually um, <clears throat> perform all good deeds and uh, walk on the uh, 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 the path and cultivate the, uh, the six or the ten parami, the, the good qualities. And the shave is we wish all beings to be uh, free, truly free and happy. Though it took more than three shaves to finish ha her head off. <laughs> so, too serious, very serious. This is a very serious business. <laughs> Okay, it's showing, you see, so clean, hey? How do you feel? Two pounds lighter, right? <laughs> yeah, beautiful face. Yeah, yeah, so happy. Uh, this is my brother here. <laughs> so. Different face, huh? Very, totally different. Okay. Uh, I was very emotional and that is her little name given to her. And those are the, you folks, refuges and you folks, yeah, refuges and, and precepts. You still remember your Dharma name? <laughs> yeah, sort of, right? <laughs> you remember your Dharma name? Dao Yi, huh? Right, good. Very good. Yeah. So that's Jaren. This is this is a nice picture of all the all the monastics. And this is a nice picture of all you folks. Yeah? Good. Hey. There you go. Another nice picture. Uh you can download that picture or we can send you that picture. Yeah, if ever can you send the picture? Yeah. But some of them don't have Facebook. Oh, yeah. Like Carrie, I'm I definitely, or Bonnie, they definitely don't have Facebook. Please send it to them. Yeah. 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 And this is Naya Dai Dao. This is uh, Eva's daughter, second daughter. Huh? Her Dharma name is the second, second generation. She's the first generation and she's the second generation because in the same family. Dai Dao, the big path. All right. Hey, this is pretty, eh? If you if you have time, you go home and flip this over. I cannot flip this over. You see on the chest, on the left chest, if you look at it this way, you see a little Buddha. Can you see? Here. And with the light on the side. Can you see like this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, the other way, Laurie, this way. <laughs> you, you, when you go home, you flip it over. You can see it, that Tan Sifu saw that the other day. This, and look at the water dripping off from the finger. Pretty, eh? Henry is a good photographer. That's bathing of the Buddha. Fast forward. Okay, good, finish. Entertainment over. Come back to business. Dharma business. Let's see. What's tonight?
So, can you turn on the uh, light, please? Meta. So I was thinking of what to do within the, because I will be, I'm healthier, I'm better. So I'm ready to travel again. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so I thought, oh, these two weeks, what we're going to do? I thought, hey, it's nice to do a meta because we talk about meta all the time, right? So if we can finish meta this week, then Mark, Mark has a request to do some etiquette again. So we could, re we, we, we did etiquette about two years ago, I think. We could actually refresh that. Yeah. So next week, if we could finish the um, meta today. Every, everybody has some meta. So if you could go home and every day you can recite the meta sutta, recite the meta sutta. As a, as a reminder, okay, for you how to practice metta. So we did that Namotasa Bhagavato. So this, this actually uh, comes from metta is one of the four sublime states that the Buddha actually taught. And it is in the uh, Nikaya uh, number 13. And he is, is called four sublime states, that's, that is loving kindness, compassion, empathetic joy, and then equanimity. Okay, so we will, I won't touch on the other three, but I'm not this time. I will touch on metta because we constantly have to especially at the end of meditation or when you go out and you see some people are suffering or animals are suffering, whatever, then you develop this, you have, you generate this thought of metta, loving kindness. So this is in, in the sutta, it says, uh, he amongst a disciple dwells pervading one direction with his heart filled with loving kindness. And similarly with his heart filled with compassion and with his, heart, with his heart filled with empathetic joy, or with his heart filled with equanimity, okay? Likewise, the second, the third, and the fourth direction, that means encompass all directions. Remember how many directions that the Buddhists talk about? Ten. ten, good, very good. Which ten? <laughs> ah, very clever, Bonnie. <laughs> Which ten? Above and below. Yeah. And sorry. Yes. 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 Okay. Northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast. Okay. All right. So remember those. Getting there, you're getting there really, huh? Little, 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 eh? Every every week you you remember little. So so likewise in the second, the third, and the fourth direction. So above, below, and around, he dwells pervading the entire world everywhere and equally, with his heart filled with the loving kindness, filled with the compassion, filled with the empathetic joy, filled with equanimity, abundant, grown, great, measureless free from amity and free from distress. So these, these are the qualities of the four sublime states. And this is actually, it's not just a teaching, it is also a practice. Okay, so, so likewise, when we practice metta, we're not just like learning metta, talking about metta, we're actually practicing metta. We're giving metta, we're receiving metta, okay? so. So the four sublime states is called Brahma Vihara. Brahma, you know, is celestial beings, the highest, highest of all celestial beings. So it's also called the four divine abodes. In Pali, it's called Apamana. So Apamana meaning Im immeasurables, immeasurables, boundless, okay? And the four immeasurables are 
we, as, as I said just now, metta, loving kindness. Metta is the Pali term, okay, ancient Indian language, ancient Indian spoken language, not written. The ancient Indian written language is Sanskrit. It's just like Shakespeare English. So Pali is just like what we talk, daily oral, oral uh, uh, language, okay? So, and then the second one is compassion, karuna, okay? And then the third, karuna, that means you identify the suffering of others as your own and develop. It has to develop from metta. So metta is the first step that one has to develop. And then after metta, then you will, you will have, you start to develop karuna, okay? You start to identify people's sufferings as, as if it is your own. It is, wow, I don't want to suffer. And how can I help to relieve those sufferings? Yeah. And then the third is empathetic joy. Look, it's not sympathetic joy, but it's empathetic joy. Sympathetic joy, that means, you know, people is maybe situations for people is worse than yours, then you will have that sympathy. But empathetic, that means I have the similar situation. We are on the same, we are in the same boat. So it's, it's, it's different, it's kind of different, all right? So this empathetic joy, that means we have feeling of this joy because others are happy. And even if we don't contribute to their happiness, but we rejoice in their happiness, all right? So this is empathetic joy. And then the last one is equanimity. Equanimity is called ubeka. <clears throat> that means a balance of mind and serenity and calmness and and treating everybody equally and treating every situation with equally remember we well, remember during meditation i always say be equanimous to whatever experience that you experience whether you like it whether you don't like it whether it's pleasant whether it's unpleasant you don't have to have rejection anger hatred towards the unpleasant one or you don't have to have craving or uh, 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 greed for the pl pleasant ones, okay? So that's equanimity. Called the four sublime states, meaning these are excellent and lofty and, and, and really, really wonderful qualities that we need to cultivate. And, and also these actually are the right, the, the most correct and the most ideal way of how we should actually relate with others, okay? And how, you know, the relationship that we have with others. And also it provide, it provide a way for us to, to be, to how to socialize with others. And also how we can remove tensions in ourselves and how can we make peace with others? And also, how can we um, dissolve personal conflict, personal grudges? And how can we remove those grudges from us and to allow ourselves to heal, to allow others to heal? So these are wonderful qualities, not just like, oh, I'm giving you loving kindness, no. It's actually when, when you're able to give loving kindness, that means you are able to love yourself. You don't have any grudge in yourself before you, otherwise how can you give loving kindness? If you constantly holding a lot of grudges, how can, how can you have loving kindness to give? You only have grudges to give, right? So, so these, are, these are wonderful qualities and they actually help us to to create a, a more harmonious society, a more harmonious community, a more harmonious inter-country or inter-nations relationships, if we can develop that, okay? So, so you know, what does it mean by abodes? That means we can actually uh, uh, dwell in these places, and these and these are the places that we can call home yeah and it's, it, these are places that 
that are not short living. These are places that we should try to actually remember and constantly remember and constantly stay there as long as we can. Yeah, difficult, eh? <laughs> not easy. And if we could, if our mind could be continuously and thoroughly be saturated by them, that would be the best. That, will, that means we will be constantly happy and constantly smiling and constantly in this kind of bliss, blissful feeling all the time, right? So um, these should be, these should become our inseparable friends, like, like, like our shadows following us all the time. Yeah. But uh, it's, it, it needs a lot of, it needs a lot of practice and it needs a lot of awareness to be able to remember this and to actually take this friend with us all the time. A lot of time we abandon these friends, abandon, uh, abandon them, them in the corners and we forget to take them whenever we go, wherever we go. Okay. So remember to take these four friends with you. Okay. So, so now we look at these, we look at, we look at this Metta Sutta and this Metta Sutta, I take it out from the uh, Sutta Central, the website of Sutta Central. <clears throat> there are a lot of um, uh, translations, of course, um, but I quite like this translation. It's clean and, and tidy and uh, it's actually very easy to understand. But though it's so easy to understand, yet there is a lot of meaning in, in each of it. I'm sorry I forgot to number these verses. If you could number these verses when I go go through it, it's easier for you. So there are actually 10 paragraphs, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yeah, 10 paragraphs. So if you could number them, or, or, then, then it's easier for you to actually uh, look at it when I go through it. So this actually, ex this there are, um, it, it is, it's found in the Pali, Pali uh, uh, Nikaya, uh, the canyon, and um, Sutta Nipala uh, uh, 8. okay? So if you want to go online and look up this, you can find a lot of other translations there. So a total of 10 verses, and it extends both the virtuous qualities that we need to develop and also a meditative development, a meditative practice. And so it's traditionally known in the English language as loving kindness. In Chinese, it's qi. Well, qi sum. Okay. So it's not qi, bei yo. Bei is not the second part, it's karuna. This is qi, qi sum. So it assists us in, uh, in developing a, a, a harmonious interpersonal relationship. And it also gives us a very, very good technique to develop a very strong meditative concentration. In, the, in later literatures, not in the earlier literatures, but in later literatures, as the commentary said, metta is one of the 10 perfections. In the Chinese literature, um, actually metta is not in the six parami, but it is in the Pali canon. In the, in the Theravadan tradition. And it is called the 10 perfections, the 10 paramis. And one of it is metta. And metta is one of the prerequisites that we need to develop in order to attain Buddhahood. So don't forget metta. Take your, take your metta friend every, every day, every second, where, wherever you go, okay? So the background story of metta uh, taught by the Buddha is actually quite quite funny. And uh, when I talked to uh, Eva the other day, and uh, Eva said, "Really, Sifu, is is that is that really the story?" I said, "Well, that's that's the story in the commentary. All everywhere in the commentary is talking about the same story." So cutting the long story short, is a group of monks went into a forest to practice. And, uh, but the forest was, was um, uh, there, there were a lot of deities there. 
and the deities they they you know they they wander around with the with the with the children and everything but when the when the monks came when mon monastics came into the forest so everybody sort of like fled and these deities didn't like it so they they wanted the monks to leave the forest so that they can have space to live again right so their children have places to play like our children uh, down the road you know on Velma Avenue play hockey <laughs> as if that is their hockey ground right but anyway so they thought how can we get rid of all these monks but the monks you know they're not afraid of anything right so when the monks went into meditation during the night these deities make all sorts of noises in different as appears different forms like ghosts and everything just wanted to scare these monastics away. So these monastics, they stayed for one night and two nights and three nights, they couldn't bear it anymore. Like they were so noisy and there were different forms and they scared them. I mean, monks are monks, monks are human beings, right? They would still be scared if they see something really funny. It's not non, it's non-human and all different shapes. And they started to get pale and everything. So they decided they decided to go back to the monastery and talk and ask the Buddha what to do if the Buddha can choose another place for them to go and practice. Of course, the Buddha looked around and with his supernatural power and said, I don't find any places for you to practice. You have to go back to that place. <laughs> and the monastic says, the monk said, Wow, really? We need to go back. Imagine, you know putting you in the in a ghost haunting place and Sifu said no go back there ever go back there <laughs> he would say oh welcome and so the monastics the monks said asked the Buddha so okay we will go back but could you please give us a technique to go back so that we can practice so the Buddha taught metta that's the back, the whole background story of metta, how it came from. So developing this loving kindness for all beings around you, visible, invisible, big or small, human or non-human, far or near, doesn't matter. Have this loving kindness for them. And that dissolves so much fear, that dissolves so much grudge that the monastics actually happily and peacefully practice and the deep and the, and, the, and the deities also happily and um, freely reside together with the monks. Okay, that's what that's the whole background story of of, of um, this metta. So when, when you look at this uh, verse one, two, and up to three point five, like half verse of the of the third paragraph, you can actually identify fifteen moral qualities and conditions that are conducive to the development of metta. Okay, so let us read through the, the first paragraph. Why, what should be done by one who is skilled in wholesomeness to gain the state of peacefulness is this. Okay, we're starting to develop that, uh, to come into the qualities that is conducive to develop metta. One should be able, one should be capable, okay? And one should be upright, okay? And one should be straightforward. Straight, it said straight, but I, I would add straightforward. And one is not proud. That means not arrogant, okay? Humble. And easy to speak to. That means, you know, sometimes, sometimes it's very difficult to speak to some people. Right, so and and one good quality is easy to speak to. Can I can I talk to you about something? Some some people would sort of jump into and get a gun out and <laughs> jump into no 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 no. Or I think they they become so angry. They they have so much doubt, or they jump into other conclusions. They you know completely biased you know so it's very easy to speak to before one can actually cultivate metta and one is mild uh easily satisfied and not caught up 
okay, easily satisfied and not caught up. That means one is content, okay? And uh, one is not caught up, that means one is not caught up in too much. I wonder if this is wrong, bustle or hustle. Bustle means hustle. Oh, bustle means hustle? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh. Okay. Oh, bustling around. Oh, okay. So it's it's the same, huh? All right. And frugal, frugal in in one oh, not call up, and frugal in one's way. That means very simple. And also, this senses calm. So, what kind of senses? All six of them, of course. <laughs> you don't have to think. I'm, I'm not trying to trap you. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah. All the six senses are calm. That means you don't, you don't look at people with really like this eyes or, 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 or that mouth or you know harsh speech or whatever you know. So all sense, all six senses are calm. And intelligent, isn't that nice? Yeah, but intelligent, intelligent is quite different from wisdom, from wise, right? What's the difference between a person who is intelligent and a person who is wise? Intelligent is experience? No, wisdom is experience. Wisdom is experience, okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Intelligence could be book learning, like scholar, professors. They are very intelligent because they they study so much, and they 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 know so much. But are they necessarily wise? Not really. Sometimes the more intelligent you are, the more unwise you are. Why? Huh? Is it about time, wisely? No, it's just intelligence and wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. Intelligence, intelligence, intellect could be an obstacle because you, as as Bonnie said, you think that you know so much, it blocks you from seeing past. So experience is actually very important to develop that wisdom. That's why you are experiencing mindfulness. Mindfulness. And you're experiencing the calmness from mindfulness. You cannot study for that calmness, to get that calmness. You cannot study to, to be equanimous. You have to cultivate that equanimity. You have to experience that when you act out with anger and ill will, then you're hurting yourself right there. Then next time you'll be a little bit wiser and not to act out so fast as to such a great extent, right? That comes from experience, the right kind of experience developed from right thought and right view. So it's actually very important, the egg full path. Yeah? Okay? Go. You, you get that, Sydney? Yeah. Good. So intelligent and not bold. What do you think that he means by not bold here? Boastful? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and 14th, and not being covetous. So what does that mean? Not yeah, not craving, money, simplicity. Money, yeah, yeah, yeah. Envy. envy, yeah, yeah, envy others. Okay. And also, we'll not do things that the wise one will later reprove. 
right? So, so these are all the 15 moral qualities that actually is, is talked in this Metta Sutta until verse, the halfway through verse three, okay? So from first verse to halfway through verse three is actually talking about morality. Can you see that? Sila morality, a lot of it in there, right? Upright, easy to talk to, easy to speak to. It's already a, mor a, moral, a moral quality, isn't it? A verbal quality, yeah? And content is the mental quality and easily satisfied, not being caught up and frugal, simplicity. And senses all calm. Senses calm, that means you are constantly be aware of the reaction reactive behavior in your senses yeah so it's, it's actually talking about the qualities and what kind of qualities that we should start to cultivate in order to be able to become a person with loving kindness so this is actually a, a help us to develop a very strong base of morality when the morality is developed the mind can start to become established because that's the foundation remember the three the three very important practices the buddha taught sila morality that's the foundation and then up on is samadhi right concentration and then up on is Panya, wisdom, right? So, so the first two verses, we look at it. The first two verses is what should be done by one who is skilled in wholesomeness to gain the state of peacefulness is this. One should be able, upright, strict, and not proud, easy to speak to, mild and well content, easily satisfied and not caught up in too much bustle, and frugal in one's ways, with senses calmed, intelligent, not bold, not being covetous when with other folk, not even doing little things that other otherwise one's blame, or one will uh, uh, the wise one will reprove later on. So these two actually the first two verses state the the strategy of how we can attain the goal of enlightenment, as well as the expression of the qualities of our character right when we when we develop all these that means we have a particular kind of character wouldn't we right a character with what with very mild behavior content easily satisfied straightforward not proud and all these are a, a, a trace of our character and so and uh, the, the, the next one is, the next verse is, may beings all live happily and safe and may their hearts rejoice within themselves. And this actually shows us how we should hold our space in relationship to the others, to the world. And also easily satisfied also tell us, uh, show that how actually we should hold our space to in relationship with others and with the world, okay? Not proud, not conceited, easy to speak to, not caught up, etc. So this is our standpoint in relationship with others, okay? All right. And then the, the, the second half of the third, may beings all live happily and safe and may their hearts rejoice within themselves. So this actually, the, the, the whole thing changes now. Before, it, it, it is a, a personal development. Now it changes to become a meditative practice, starting from the second half of verse three. Okay, it becomes a meditative practice. And this may beings this is called 
in in English grammar is called imperative verbs, right? You still remember that? <laughs> Not that anymore, right? It's called imperative verb. May, may, may we wish or may all beings. Okay, so may they be, and then and may their hearts rejoice within themselves. And these are called uh, no. Let's see. May wherever they may be, whether they blah 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 belong. Blah, 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 blah. Those are the direct, direct speech. Let no, let no one. May their hearts rejoice within themselves. That means it's guide the intention into that particular present moment to the generation of loving kindness and goodwill. So this this language is actually very very direct and affirmative to a point where we can actually cultivate this state of wishing, wishes in our mind continuously, okay? Since we know where does the intention come from? Come from where? Come from the eyes, come from the, the nose, come from the mind? Yeah, it comes from the mind. So, so this is the actually the most important is we are actually cultivating the mental quality by develop by developing this kind of quality okay it the mind needs to be in that mindset before we can actually cultivate loving kindness that means the intention has to be right okay we need to have that kind of intention and wishing others to be happy Otherwise, there's no way that we can, we can, we can cultivate matter. And rather than constantly thinking about something or remembering something or planning to do something, one actually try to engage their mind into this mindset from moment to moment, rather than just thinking about it. It's actually becoming a practice. So, this practice, you know, it is not just um, a simple practice. It's actually quite a difficult. It's, I don't know whether you find it difficult. When I first learned it um, many years ago, I find it very difficult. I cannot practice metta because I don't know how to practice metta. Until one day I, I suddenly realized, hey, metta is just like the sun. It's just like the rising sun, a beaming sun. Be you know, the, 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 the sun rays just pierce through the clouds and shine shine onto the, the, the dark corners of the world. This is metta. And since then, I know how to practice metta. And, uh, you know, the, the metta that I learned from my teacher, I cannot practice that. <laughs> I developed this, my, my own way of practicing metta. That's how I teach you how to practice metta. It's just like sun. Our follicles is just like many suns in, in, in the whole body. It's like beaming, beaming, beaming. You know, sending out warmth and, 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 and brightness. That's, that's loving kindness, isn't it? Being bright, that's loving kindness. So it's actually, this, is, this, this transition is actually helping us to develop this kind of virtue. Okay? And how we actually hold ourselves in relationship with with others, uh, as I said, whether they are human or non-human, visible, invisible. Okay, so these are these are guidelines for. And so he says, whatever there may be with breath of life, whether they be frail or very strong, without perception, be they long or short, or middle sized or be big or small, that means like far or near, big or small, right? Or dense or visible, invisible, visible, invisible. Can we, we don't, don't, don't ever think that we are so super that we can see through everything. A lot of us have this illusion and delusion. We are, we are super beings. We don't even able, can even able to see through the dew worms or the worms beneath the dirt, where the robins can. 
the robins can, the robins can hear, maybe they can hear, they can see, I don't know, or they can sense, but they know, then they, they peck, and then they drag a worm out. Oh, there's a worm there? You don't even see it. So, you know, don't, I don't know whether you believe in invisible beings. Do you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You? Invisible beings? Not necessarily ghost, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Not necessarily ghost. Invisible just to our own eyes. The worms are invisible to us. The bacteria or the bugs in the dirt are invisible to us, but they are visible to the microscope, right? So don't, don't jump into a conclusion that invisible beings are necessarily ghost. No, they are not necessarily ghosts, okay? So it, it's just that invisible to human eyes, to our eyes, far or near, big or small. We wish that all beings, all of these beings, be happy, be secure, and their hearts rejoice within themselves. Within themselves, inside, the heart is happy. And these are the guidelines for our wholesome actions. Okay, so that is whether they dwell far or near, finish this. Let no one bring about another another ruin. That is one, two, three, four, five, six. Verse six. Let no one bring about another ruin and not despise in any way or place. Let them not wish each other any ill from provocation or from amity. That means may all beings be free of amity. May all beings be free of all this difficulty and be happy. Okay, so number seven, verse seven to nine. So the, 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 the top three passages on page two, just as a mother at the risk of life loves and protects her child, her only child. So one should cultivate this boundless love to all that live in the whole universe and extending from a consciousness sublime upwards and downwards and across the world untroubled free from hate and amity and while one stands and while one sits or when one lies down still free from drowsiness one should be intent on this mindfulness this is divine abiding here, they say. So verse 7, beginning of also an imperative to uh, becoming expressive. One should cultivate this boundless life to all. This moves to express a more in the nature of this practice is offering to show how one whole one place in this whole universe like a relationship of a child to a mother. So no mothers in this world would hate their own child. No mothers. It's just that sometimes the mother would have a kind of karma or sankara react reactive pattern and at certain time, at certain at, at, at such time, they might they might do something that people looking from the outside world as if they hate their children. But I honestly believe that no mothers in this world would hate their children. No, it's just that their karmic karmic forces are so strong that they at that moment that they cannot show loving kindness to their children. The innate nature of a mother is always love. That's how I believe that. It's only their karma that actually pushed them to behave in such a way that they hurt their children. Okay, so so this verse seven is you can you can depict this picture, the lovely image of a mother holding a child. That means such a closeness of a child to a mother. 
and it's ex actually extend this consciousness to such a level it goes upwards it goes downwards and it goes across in all direction and this actually depicts how strong that loving kindness could be and how big a range that loving kindness can cover okay and how far metta really can reach and there is actually no boundary of metta i remember uh, once in 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 inside the prison one of the inmates said you know um um i don't know what happened to my ipo the the um uh, uh parole officer he suddenly completely changed his attitude and he did not support anything that i have done that, that i am doing that i have done and he did not recognize any of my merits and uh he's going to put his foot down on my <laughs> parole and he was so angry he was so frustrated and he he was so upset so depressed everything all this negativity come up and i said to him i said you know your ipo probably may be going through difficult time in his life he might not be really pointing this arrow to you you know don't take it on like that he said oh yeah you can say it <laughs> you can say it. it's not you it's me i said yes but you know, I said, it's not, it's not going to help you if you constantly hold that grudge in you. He said, then what do you suggest me to do? I said, loving kindness, metta. You must be kidding. <laughs> he said, you must be kidding. I'm sending him metta? I said, I'm not kidding. And I'm not lying. This is the only thing that you can do to dissolve that ice between you and him right now to remove that grudge. Oh, no way. I cannot do this. How can I send metta to him? I hate him. I said, yes, because you hate him. That's why you need to send metta. You need to send metta to yourself first to remove that hatred. Then whatever that, whatever, obstacles that is created by that hatred will be removed and whatever the grudges that he's holding on to you right now could possibly be removed and he looked at me with really dirty look he said <laughs> i said well you can take my words or you can just forget my words doesn't matter doesn't matter to me it doesn't harm me but if you take my words it may create a very different situation. And he said, well, you know, I said, what's there to lose, right? You've got nothing to lose. Come on. You're already inside. You want to go outside, right? You've got nothing to lose. Why don't you just try? He said, okay, I'll try. I said, yeah, try, just try, you know, see whether it works, right? Two weeks later, two weeks or less than two weeks. One or two weeks, I think the most is two weeks. I think it's possibly one week. And he came in, he said, it works. <laughs> I said, well, what works? I forgot completely. I think it was two weeks. I said, what works? He said, Meta works. I said, of course Meta works. I said, what happened? <laughs> he said, I don't know why this IPO completely turned turn around again. He supported everything that I'm doing, that I've been doing. And he recognized it and then he, he supported it. He said, you're doing such a great job. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. I'm going to recommend you. I said, <laughs> I said you see, it works. I said, you see, it works because you believe in this and you do it yourself. Nobody can do it for you. Meta really works, I tell you. It removed the grudge between me and my brother. My brother was, wasn't happy that I became a nun. 
and he didn't talk to me for 10 years. Not really not don't talk to me. He didn't like to talk to me, okay? Let's put it that way. And when he talked to me, he did, he did not look at me. So you know that he did not like to talk to me, right? And after that, you know, after 10 years, he was sick, right? And uh, so my sister-in-law told me that he was really mad with me because I renounced. He thought he lost a sister. He thought, he thought I, I wasted so much of my education and uh, I could have done so much more for humanity rather than become, you know, becoming a nun. I, I'm not doing anything. So when, when eventually I knew, when I walked into his hospital room, I said, he said, what are you doing here? I said, I come to visit you because he was sick. I come to visit you. I'm not dead yet. I said, I know you're not dead yet. <laughs> That's why I come to visit you, right? <laughs> and he said, I don't want you here. I don't need you here. So blunt, so rude. And... You know, I, 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 at that time, I call myself a meditator, right? A meditator is supposed to be calm <laughs> and balanced, right? Equanimous. So I said, I said to myself, be calm, be equanimous, <laughs> don't react. So I walk, I walk, I walk, I walk towards him. And I put my, my hand on his shoulder. I said, I said, no, big brother. You know, when your friends come to see you, you say thank you. And now I come with your old, old father and you, <laughs> I don't necessarily need to come and visit you. I don't need to. I said, if you don't want me here, I can go. He said, I don't want you here. And he started panting, hyperventilating. I said, well, he said, I need oxygen. I said, yeah, sure, you need oxygen. Go back to your hospital bed and put on the oxygen mask. And, I, I, and then I left. I was angry. My dad was angry too. <laughs> a month later, I went to I went for another meditation course, and on day eight, I thought about I thought of him, and I thought of him. I said, "No, I'm I'm not going to hold this grudge. I'm not going to hold this. He is dying, and before he die, I need to remove this. I need to remove. I need to dissolve this grudge. I need to remove his anger." So I started to send him meta, meta, and meta, and meta from far, far away. We are like three hours away, right? And then after meditation, I came home, and uh, Yang Sifu told me, your brother is in hospital. He wanted to see you. So, wow, he wanted to see me. The sky has opened up. He wanted to see me. I went to see him. And I went to see him. I said, you know, big brother, I love you because you're my brother. You always love me because I'm your little baby sister. And it doesn't change. This love doesn't change because I have take up ropes. I still love you as my brother. And if there is anything I can help to ease whatever in, that is happening in your life, I would do that. And I put my hand on his hand. And he's just so like, very lightly he squeezed me. And I could feel that he squeezed. But he's got, he's got this dignity in him, right? Integrity that, you know. <laughs> but anyway, and I said, anytime you need me, just let me know. He said, are you sure? I said, yes, I'm sure. So that really dissolved. And then and one day he... His pastor came and visited him. I, 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 I talked with his pastor for two hours and he just listened while lying on bed. And after his pastor left, he said, wow, I did not know that you are doing such great thing for humanity. I'm so proud to have a sister like you. And he started, he started to call me Sifu then. <laughs> you know, not really Sifu, but Jesse, you know? So, but you know, it's not that he called me Sifu that I feel happy. It's because that he actually saw what I'm doing and he actually agreed. And actually, he actually applaud what I'm doing. And, and he feel proud to have a sister like that. Rather than holding a grudge, there is, there is love and pride in him having a sister like that. So metta works, I tell you. 
Okay, so I don't think we can finish. Let us wait until next week we finish with Meta. Yeah, okay, so up to seven. All right, oh, I need the, let's see. We may need the, some announcement, huh? All right, there's some announcement. Announcement here. There you go. So the Canada Buddhist Festival coming up on May 28th, 9.30 to 6 o'clock. Anybody who would want to volunteer, please email polam at polam.ca. We have a meditation tent like last year and also an exhibition tent. And then there will be one day mindfulness meditation, June 18th is full. It is full. People are on wait list. Okay. But if any one of you here tonight haven't re applied yet, if you want to apply, apply soon. You will have a first priority to get in. <laughs> That's the advantage of coming to Tuesday night. <laughs> Donnie, you want to do it one day, hey? Yeah. <laughs> you should do one day. Well, July 16th, we have a children's course run by Dhamma Sarabi. And uh, so if any of if, if any kids want to come, please go up to um, sarabidhamma.org to apply. It's going to, be hold, it's going to be held in Poland. We're going to um, provide a venue for them. And then there will be this auspicious uh, chanting ceremony in Vancouver. And uh, on the uh, 1st of August until the 7th of August, and there will be offerings of light and food. Uh, if you want to offer uh, and support the uh, chanting ceremony, there are registration forms over there. And there will be a gratitude prostration and then the repentance prostration uh, in the beginning and the, at the end of the ceremony. If you want to write out whatever that you want to be grateful for, or whatever that you want to repent for, send it send it in to uh, to whatever ceremony at polam.ca. Okay. All right. Let's um, dedicate our merits. So we bring our attention back to this body, to this breath. We're experiencing these constant changes within this physical body, within this mind. And we allow this good thought to arise on our mind. May all the benefits that I gather tonight by hearing the words of the Buddha be shared with all beings. All beings, human, non-human, visible, invisible, big or small, far or near. May they be free of enmity. May they be free of miseries. May they start to live in a world with brightness, warmth, and experience love and peace. May we wish more and more people will encounter the words of the Buddha, study them, practice them, help themselves to liberate themselves from the entanglements and be truly free and happy. Okay. Good night, everybody. See you next week.